I am saved by grace. Not of works lest any man should boast, but it's by the grace of God that we're saved. And so I'm saved today by the grace of God. I was lost as anybody could be. I was far away from God as anybody can get. Because you know what? If you're not saved, you're as far away from God as anybody can get. You might say, well, preacher, I don't profane. I don't uh, commit adultery. I don't steal. I don't cheat. I don't lie. Every now and then I give some money to the church. Well, a matter of fact, I paid for that steeple over there on that church at Rybolt or somewhere. Oh, I, it wouldn't be up there had it been for me. I want to tell you something. God thung this world into place. And if he wants to put a steeple on the church, he can do it without me. If I don't want to help him do it, he'll do it on his own. But if God wants it, he'll we'll get it done. And so it's not what I've done for God, but it's what he's done for me. When we come to the judgment of God. Now, humility is something that we all must have. It's humility. Now, I think one great mistake the holiness church has made down through the years is trying to set ourselves up that we're so holy and we're so righteous. You better look like we do. You better wear the same kind of shoes we got, the same color clothes. Your hair had better hang just like mine. Our brother, listen, we're going to have a talk with you if you want to come to this church. I heard of a man one time went to a church. Uh, if it's true or not, I don't know. But said he went in and just had on regular clothes. And after church, the pastor went to him and said, we've got a code here at this church. We all wear suits. And we, we, if you come here now, we want you to wear a suit. And said, if you don't have a suit, I'll take you out to Goodwill and I'll buy you one. So you can wear a suit when you come back to church. Let me tell you something. I wasn't worried about a suit when I went to church that night. I wasn't worried about my shoes. I was worried about my soul. I wasn't looking to get dressed up. But praise the Lord, I'm telling you, I took off the old coat and God put on the new. Why? Because I wasn't dressed up for this world to look at me but I was getting dressed so I could go to heaven and stand in the presence of a holy God. Woo! Hallelujah! You gonna tell you what? You got shoes, they got holes in the bottom of them, stick you a piece of cardboard in them and you come on to church and find you a seat and you'll be treated just as good as if a millionaire walked through that door and came in flashing his pocketbook and everything else. You'll get the same love from this church and the same love from God as you would get and no matter how rich you were. I thank God this morning you don't go to heaven because you're poor but you don't go to heaven because you're rich. You go to heaven because that God saved you. You might have a million dollars in your pocket or in the bank account this morning. God bless you. You're welcome here. I'm not preaching you into hell because you got some money. Because if you've got God over that money and ruling that money and letting God share that money with you, you're just as saved as Lazarus was lying in that choir of mud and filth and dirt and a dog licking his sword. We don't get to heaven about what we are. Are, we get to heaven by what God made us. And God made us because we are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things have passed away and all things have become new. I remember when God called me to preach, I thought I had to have a suit. Well, I went out and scraped up enough money and somehow or another. I went to the men's shop in Flemingsburg. I don't know if y'all remember that. That's years ago. The men's shop in Flemingsburg and I bought me an old brown, a new brown suit. I think probably paid everything I had for it. Didn't cost very much, probably $20, $30 or so back in the 50s. But I went out preaching in that suit. It's the only one I had. I mean, I preached in many places. I saw so many people, that suit began to speak to them when I come into church. That's how old it was. But it wasn't that suit I had on that made me a preacher. It was what God dressed me up with inside that made me a preacher. It wasn't that I was a dainty looking and my hair was slicked back and I looked like somebody. I can't help that. God just give it to me. I ain't going, and I ain't going to ask him to take it away. But that's not why that I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher because God sent a signal from heaven and said, little country boy, I want you to go preach. Yeah, well, you know, GPC. Uh, go, uh, uh, go preach the, uh, the gospel. And so I thought maybe that meant go plow corn. But anyway, 
God said, no, I was plowing corn. I mean, I've plowed an old, come by an old mule up and down rows of corn, you know, walking along. It'd be the longest day I ever saw. Tramping after the sun beating down. I'm a person that won't suntan. I burn. Then I peel off and I burn again. And boy, my hands would be raw. My ears finally got me a jungle gym hat in Flemingsburg somewhere and that saved my ears. And, but I'd plow this old mule. Well, after I got saved on May the 15th, 1953, I come back, plowed that same old horse down that row. But man, I would look over and I would have plowed 20 rows and couldn't even remember doing it because I was caught up so much in this new suit that God gave me. Not the one that's wearing on the outside, but the one I was wearing on the inside. And if you get one on the inside, it's going to creep out and it's going to show on the outside. And somebody's going to see that you've got something something new and you're different than you once was. Woo! Hallelujah! Glory to God that used to carry a bottle around your hip pocket. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, now fill it full of pamphlets uh, to go out and hand out to somebody and tell them they need to be saved. It don't matter how low you might be this morning. It don't matter. Listen, Christian. Listen to me. Just because you made a mistake last week because the devil got a little too close uh, and, and you were frustrated about something and maybe you Maybe you just got out of sorts and shouldn't have been. And you and the devil told you this morning, uh, you got the well, you're not fit to go to church. Let me tell you something. If God gave up on us because we made one mistake, there would be none of us here. We might as well admit it. Now, if you're so self-righteous this morning that think that you've been perfect every day, you haven't failed God, you haven't made a mistake, then you're way better than the apostles that he chose to preach the gospel for the first go-round. Woo! Hallelujah, I'll shout about that. I'll shout about that. Because let me tell you, all I am, all I ever hope to be, all I ever will be, will be not because of what I have done for God, but it will be what God has done for me. Amen. Now I can't put bundles of stuff under my arm and carry it to heaven to the judgment and say, well, Lord, look what I've done. You know what the Bible says? Not everyone that saith, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom. But who did he say would enter the kingdom of heaven? He that doeth the will of my Father. What is the will of the Father? He that winneth souls is wise. You know, I don't even know if I've won one soul or not. I know people count the souls, you know. Well, we held this meeting and 45 souls got saved. You know, I've seen people come to this altar time and again and got up and said they got saved and I haven't seen them since. But they went right back out and did the same old things they did before they came in. I can't count and I'm not interested because when I come to the presence of a holy God, you know what he's going to say to the greatest preacher that ever lived? And that's saved, that's really got God in his life. You know what he's going to say to that millionaire that built the church? And he's saved. I mean, Christian loves God with all of his heart. He's not going to bring up that big church he helped build. He's not going to bring up the 44 years that I've been preaching here. He's not going to bring up, uh, you know, uh, we went from a little tiny concrete block building over into this fabulous place that God has given us and God paid for it and it belongs to God. He's not going to bring that up. 